Welcome to the MathAcademy.net channel. And welcome to our series on postmodern deconstruction. My name is Bo. Today we look at fractions, where we address the question, fractions is hard, or is it? And welcome to our guest, Alan, who uses postmodern deconstruction in his work. Thank you, Bo. Alan, what does deconstruction mean to you? Well, Bo, to me, deconstruction means what it says, destruction and reconstruction. It is the method that is used by postmodern skeptical thinking that dates back to the ancient Greek sophists. The sophists warned against patronization that is hidden in choices that are presented as nature. So to deconstruct means to unmask false nature by finding alternatives to choices presented as nature. And what does postmodern mean to you? It seems to me that we must distinguish between postmodernism and postmodernity. Postmodernism is what we do with our head, that is, how we think about the world. And postmodernity is what we do with our hands, that is, how we act in the world. To simplify, postmodernism is skepticism toward hidden patronization. And postmodernity is the social condition that was created by IT, information technology. Thank you. Alan, do you have a short answer to today's question? To me, the short answer to the question, fractions is hard, or is it, is that fractions is not hard by nature, but by choice. Fractions is made difficult by its missing link to the root of mathematics, the natural fact many. So, Alan, what is the root of fractions? Well, Bo, to deal with many, we count by bundling. We can bundle in icon numbers, or we can bundle in tens, needing no icon since it has been chosen as the standard bundle number. When bundling in fives, three leftovers becomes zero dot three fives or three divided by five fives, thus leftovers root both decimal fractions and ordinary fractions. Alan, do you have a short answer to how to make fractions easy? Yes, Bo. We simply must teach first order icon creation and second order icon counting instead of skipping both and go directly to third order 10 counting. Alan, can you please specify? Certainly, Bo. Mathematics is a natural science about the natural fact many. To deal with many, we total, that is, we ask the question, how many? And the answer is given by the total. That is why we use the word algebra that means to unite in Arabic. Thus all mathematics statements should begin with its subject, the total, and specify what the total is. The first step is to represent the total in three ways, by physical sticks, by graphical strokes, and by spoken words. Thus four things can be represented by four sticks on the table, and by four strokes on a paper, and by the word four. Now we can write that T equals stroke 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 stroke. That is what the Romans did, isn't it? Indeed it is. But the Arabs went one step further by using icons. They united the four strokes into one single symbol consisting of four strokes. Thus they transformed four ones into one fours. But isn't four ones and one fours the same? Well, Bo. Four ones means that you count in ones, so that one is the unit. Whereas one fours means that you count in fours, so that four is the unit. And that you count by bundling and stacking the total in fours. If we write the digits in a less sloppy way, we can see that there are five sticks and strokes in the five icon, and six strokes in the six icon, etc. Thus first order counting, bundles sticks and icons, so that there are five sticks in the five icon, etc. And second order counting bundles the total in icon bundles, where third order counting bundles in tens. But why do the icons stop at ten? We count by bundling but we never use the bundle icon. If we count or bundle in fives, we count one, two, three, four, bundle, one bundle one, one bundle two, etc. or in a shorter way, one, two, three, four, ten, eleven, twelve, etc. Thus we do not use the five icon. Likewise, ten does not need an icon when counting in tens. In this way, ten is the only number with its own name but without its own icon. This makes 10 a cognitive bomb since 10 is the follower of 9 while 1 0 is the follower of 4 when counting in 5s. So 10 is not 1 0 by nature, but by choice of the bundle number. Alan, 
What do you mean with leftovers? Well, Bo. First we count the sticks or strokes by bundling them in for example fours. Then we can place the bundles in a left bundle cup, and the unbundled in a right single cup. We don't have to place the physical bundles. For each bundle we just place a stick in the bundle cup. Now we can use the icons to write the total using a decimal point to separate the bundles from the unbundled. In this way a total of six ones can be counted in fours as one fours and two ones, and written as one dot two fours. So a natural number includes a decimal point to separate the bundles from the unbundled, and a unit. Thus a total of seven ones can be recounted in fives as one dot two fives, or as one dot three fours, or as two dot one threes, etc. If counted in tens, seven ones become zero dot seven tens. However, we only write seven leaving out the unit and misplacing the decimal point one place to the right. This may be okay in business, but it creates learning problems in school. So decimal numbers come before ordinary fractions. They do, if we represent many by sticks or strokes. But decimal numbers and ordinary fractions are created at the same time if we represent many by blocks. Here the bundles can be placed on top of each other as a stack. As to the unbundled we must make a choice. We can place them next to the stack, or we can place them on top of the stack. If placing the unbundled next to the stack we might have two fives and three ones, which can be written with decimals as two dot three fives. Placing the unbundled on top of the stack, we have to count the three unbundled in fives, and the recount formula then gives the result. The 3 is 3 divided by 5, fives, which is 3 divided by 5, times 5. So preferring decimals to fractions is a question of taste. In any case, the two forms are united by the fact that 0 0.3 fives is the same as 3 over 5 of the fives. What do you mean with the recount formula? We saw that digits are icons that contain the number of strokes they represent. Likewise, Operations are also icons that show the counting processes they represent. Taking away 4 is iconized as a horizontal stroke showing the trace left, when dragging away the 4. Taking away 4 many times, that is, taking away 4s, is iconized as an uphill stroke showing the broom, sweeping away the 4s. Placing a stack of 4 singles next to another stack is iconized as a cross, showing the juxtaposition of the two stacks and building up a stack of three fours is iconized as an uphill cross, showing a three times lifting of the fours. So three divided by four means three counted in fours? Precisely. Counting in fours means to repeat taking away four, that is, dividing the total by four. So the counting result can be predicted by a recount formula, saying that the total t can be bundled in b's t divided by b times. So t is t divided by b, b's, which is the same as t, divided by b, times b. Thus the recount formula predicts, that recounting a total of 8 ones and 4s, gives 8 divided by 4, of the 4s, which is 2 4s. So recounting is done by debundling and rebundling? That is one option. So to recount 4 5s and 6s manually, first we must count up the 4 5s. Then we must debundle them in 1s. And finally we must rebundle them in sixes. This is a long and tiresome job. However, if we use the recount formula in a calculator, we can predict the result to be three sixes in the rest. And the rest is found by removing the three sixes from the four fives. So the result of recounting can be predicted by a calculator using division and subtraction. From the recount formula it seems as if division and multiplication come before addition and subtraction. Indeed they do. After recounting is predicted by a rebundle formula using division and multiplication, we can predict the unbundled by a restack formula using subtraction and addition. So the natural order of operations is division, multiplication, subtraction, and in the end addition. This is in contrast to the tradition that reverses the natural order, which creates yet more learning problems. Alan, fractions can also be added? Okay, Bo. Let us begin with adding numbers. What would you say is most correct, saying that 2 plus 3 is 5, or saying that 2 times 3 is 6? To me they are both correct, but if I should choose I would say that 2 plus 3 equals 5 is most correct. 
Well, I think we should distinguish between grounded mathematics, that is rooted in observations, and ungrounded mathematism, that is true in the library, but not in the laboratory. Thus 2 times 3 equals 6 is natural correct, since it is grounded in the fact, that with 3 as a unit, 2 3s can be recounted as 6 1s. In contrast to the saying that, 2 plus 3 equals 5, may be political correct in a library, but as countless counterexamples in the laboratory, two weeks plus three days equals 17 days, etc. But to add fractions, we must teach how to find the common denominator. We must indeed, if we want to teach mathematism, instead of mathematics. The fraction paradox will illustrate the difference. A teacher asks the class, what is one over two plus two over three? The class answers that one over two plus two over three is one plus two over two plus three which is 3 over 5. The teacher then says, no. The correct answer is 1 over 2 plus 2 over 3 is the same as 3 over 6 plus 4 over 6, which is 7 over 6. To this the class asks, but 1 over 2 of 2 cokes plus 2 over 3 of 3 cokes is 3 over 5 of 5 cokes. How can it be 7 cokes out of 6? The point is that all numbers have units and you can only add if the units are the same. 2 over 3 does not exist in itself. It will always be 2 over 3 of something, as demonstrated by the recount formula. But the recount formula only shows that 2 over 3 of 3 is 2. How about 2 over 3 of 15? Well, you just recount 15 ones and threes as 15 over 3, threes, that is, as 5 threes. So 2 over 3 of 15 is the same as 2 over 3 of 3, 5 times, which is 10. Alan, can you briefly sum up your view on how to deconstruct fractions? I will be glad to do so, Bo. Fractions did not create themselves. Fractions are rooted in the root of mathematics, the natural fact many. Counting many in bundles, leftovers might be placed next to the bundle stack, described as decimals or on top described as ordinary fractions. Thus both decimal fractions and ordinary fractions come in naturally, in grade 1. However, the tradition insists that counting only takes place in tens. And instead of using the natural way to represent numbers as for example, 3.2 tens, the tradition insists that the unit is removed and that the decimal point is misplaced. In this way decimal fractions are hidden until they are introduced in middle school as special fractions, having as denominator the number 10, or pars of 10. Likewise, ordinary fractions are postponed to middle school and defined as a special case of division. So what is easy by nature is made difficult by somebody's choice. And we might ask, what is the purpose in making an easy thing difficult? A good question, Alan. Let us return to that later. A good idea, Bo. Thank you, Alan, for sharing with us your view on the question, fractions is hard, or is it? Next time at the mathacademy.net channel we will look at deconstruction of pre-calculus. Again we will ask, pre-calculus is hard, or is it?